Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, I'm glad to be here again at uh, the Fair Middle East Conference in Riyadh. Um, yeah, this is a very hot topic. Uh, today, uh, we have a lot of challenges with electric vehicles, with lithium-ion batteries, uh, products and technologies. So I would like to provide you an overview about this hazard or the risk of having uh, lithium ion batteries uh, in our houses, in our work, in, uh, in everywhere we, we move on. Um, I will share a few incidents uh, or like trends and statistics related to the uh, fires related to fire uh, to batteries. Um, also a quick overview and examples of uh, the developed standards that uh, we developed uh, back in the US to uh, evaluate those products and to make sure that they are safe for use. Um, also, there are developments on the code requirements uh, for lithium ion batteries and electric vehicles uh, in international level. So we can share it with you and uh, maybe uh, we hope that we can duplicate it here in the region. Uh, we have created a public education program that can be also used in, uh, in many uh, events and uh, conferences. So starting talking about the hazards or the risk of lithium ion batteries. So it's important to understand uh, the physical construction of these batteries and how they are uh, constructed. Basically, there are different physical formats. Uh, the main one or the famous uh, uh, type is the cylindrical one. Uh, but there are other types such as uh, pouch and prismatic uh, uh, physical formats. Uh, it's important to understand that it's uh, similar to any uh, electrochemical cell. So you have four major components, which contains uh, cathode, the anode, uh, the separator, and the electrolytes. Uh, it has uh, a safety features, uh, such as vents, switches, and the fuses. And also the important point here, um, is to, to identify where is the risk in, in these components. So as you can see, four of these components could be a, a combustible material. Uh, so always the cathode, the separator, and the electrolytes are uh, combustible material. And sometimes the case itself of the battery is also made from combustible material. Uh, we had heard a lot about thermal runaway. So thermal runaway is, is a situation where the cell itself uh, increases its, its temperature through self-heating in uncontrollable fashion. It basically happens when the separator between the, athode, uh, between the cathode and the anode uh, breaks. Um, so that will increase the temperature and increase the uh, heat generated inside the battery. Uh, more than the heat, it can be dissipated throughout the, the battery. So this is what is called thermal runaway. And in this situation, we don't have any control at the battery uh, uh, level. So why the separator fails? Uh, we have different uh, common causes or reasons that uh, uh, lead the battery to fail or the separator to fail. Basically, it could be uh, an environmental uh, reason due to uh, chemical exposure or uh, different kind of climate change like cold or heat. It could be due to the uh, mechanical reasons uh, such as uh, car, car incidents or crush incidents. Uh, it could be due to the age and the degradation of the battery itself. Or it could be a share, uh, an electrical uh, failure due to short circuit or overcharging. And last, it could be uh, uh, due to manufacturing defects in the uh, battery itself. Uh, so this is a short video where it shows like 25 lithium ion cells were tested in our lab uh, just to show how the thermal runaway, when it starts in one cell and it starts spreading to the other cells within the same uh, pack. So this is when it started, we, uh, we allowed the battery to go into thermal runaway in, in one cell. Then you can see how fast within less than 20 seconds, you have a complete fire within that battery pack. And this is only 25 uh, cells.
Okay, so uh, we have also developed um, uh, a data recording uh, platform uh, where we started from uh, 1995 until today, uh, recording all incidents related to lithium ion batteries in different kind of products, uh, all consumer products and electric vehicles, anything related to energy storage systems. You can see the number of incidents that, it, that is recorded uh, um, until end of 2024, you can see the increase, uh, the growth of number of incidents that's related to batteries and specifically fire incidents. This is just a comparison between uh, also the increase of incidents for batteries uh, related to e-mobility devices like e-bikes or e-scooters. And this is consumer products such as uh, laptops or iPads or any other uh, consumer products. Uh, we gather this information that are sources from different uh, countries globally, uh, majority of it from, from news. Uh, we have also, uh, uh, we receive also reports from, from uh, fire departments or the authorities uh, responsible about the, uh, the incidents. Um, these are like the countries also we major uh, the majority of the incidents are uh, recorded as you can see it's happening everywhere uh, so it's important to share the um, uh, the the message with everyone uh, everyone here uh, so this is the uh, the platform that we have uh, everyone can uh, look at the uh, number of incidents the statistics we have it can be shared, it can be printed or uh, uh, sent uh, to everyone just to share experience and share the knowledge about the incidents and also the reasons or the causes behind of these incidents. Okay, so coming to the standards, uh, there is a huge development globally for testing standards to evaluate these products. Uh, we started with batteries related to uh, uh, light electric vehicles. Um, it's like uh, electric forklifts or industrial machineries uh, inside uh, warehouses or storage facilities. The standard 20, uh, 2271 covers the uh, electrical, mechanical and environmental. So we are not evaluating only the fire or the electrical shock safety related. It covers also the performance of these devices, which could affect uh, the battery or the device to fail. From e-mobility perspective, uh, there are two standards related to e-bikes and e-scooters, 2849, 2272. Again, it does not cover only the battery. We are not just evaluating the battery itself. We start with the battery cell, and again, we, we have the, uh, the battery pack. Uh, the e-scooter system and the electrical system, including the charger. So the system is uh, uh, the system approach is is basically to cover the complete system, not only uh, the uh, individual battery. Uh, we also still developing an, another standards based on the market needs and the risk that's uh, been identified from uh, from the authorities. Uh, there is a standard called uh, uh, 1487, which covers the storage and the charging uh, and the charging of uh, equipments for related to batteries. Also, the charging equipments for uh, micro mobility devices such as uh, uh, e-scooters. 1, for electric vehicles, uh, as I mentioned, the 2271 it's called for light electric vehicles. Again, it's uh, applications like uh, electric uh, forklifts. Uh, but for uh, 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 our electric vehicles, uh, regular uh, vehicles, there are a few standards which covers the battery, uh, 2580. Uh, the charging equipments for electric vehicles are evaluated based on the UL2202. Uh, the electric vehicle supply equipment uh, is evaluated to another standard, which is UL2594. We have another standard under development, which is UL3202, uh, which uh, an outline of investigation for uh, mobile electric vehicle charging systems that is also integrated with energy storage systems. 
Uh, last year, we have launched our uh, uh, our advanced battery lab in the US. Um, so this is a very specific lab for, for battery testing and evaluating uh, anything related to batteries and lithium ion, uh, ion batteries in the, uh, in the US. So from model code uh, perspective and fire, fire safety requirements, um, we all know follow the NFBA standards and the ICC codes or the IBC codes and standards. Uh, related to micro mobility devices, uh, as of now, the 2024 edition of NFPA 1, the fire code, uh, refers to the standards uh, for uh, micro mobility devices for e scooters and e bikes uh, that these devices shall be listed and labeled to the uh, reference standard here. There is also a section in the fire code which uh, highlights the requirements of micro mobility devices, any uh, powered micro mobility devices. And there is also a specific requirement and restrictions for devices uh, charging locations and its operation. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the developments and uh, 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 updates are happening for the next edition for the 2027 uh, NFBA one. Similarly, the NFPA, sorry, the IFC, the International Fire Code, has the se uh, set the same requirement for uh, micro mobility devices. With electric vehicles, the IBC um, refers to uh, NFPA 70 for installations, uh, anything related to electric vehicle charging stations or systems, it has to be installed in accordance to NFPA 70 the electrical code. Again, the electrical charging system equipment also shall be listed and labeled to the referenced uh, standards. This is NFA 70 where it's uh, uh, the section or the article uh, 511 uh, provides the requirements for installation of electric vehicle charging equipments and electric vehicle power transfer system. For energy storage systems, the International Fire Code 2027 edition um, has also set uh, the requirements uh, where it refers to NFPA uh, 855, uh, which is the standard for installation of stationary uh, energy storage systems. All design, installation, use, and maintenance and inspection, it has to be uh, in accordance to NFPA 855. Also, it, it refers to the UL 9540, uh, which is the uh, testing standard for the energy storage systems. And uh, I know there's uh, a work is happening in, within NFPA to create a, a battery safety code, which is NFPA 800. That's, uh, I think it's still in the initial stage of development. Similarly, the NFPA 1, has also the same requirement of the IF IFC, uh, where all the installation requirements has on design should be uh, in accordance to NFP 855. Okay, so this is the program that we have uh, initiated uh, to educate and provide awareness to uh, to people. Uh, this uh, awareness program is called Take Charge of battery safety. It's basically uh, a way to uh, to let people know how to prevent uh, uh, fires related to, to batteries, starting with uh, uh, choosing certified uh, products. And uh, if you have it, you, have, uh, you, you should handle it with care and always stay safe, um, stay alert for warning signs. Uh, also make sure to recycle these devices uh, properly and get out quickly if there is uh, if there is a fire, and finally again and again educate others on safe practices. Uh, this is also a short video on this program, an announcement of this uh, safety public uh, campaign. This is not a game, like that happened so quick. 
I don't know if you'd even be able to get out. I'm gonna share some things that you can do to take charge of battery safety. C, choose certified products. Look at product packaging to ensure that they carry the mark of a nationally recognized testing laboratory who has done a safety evaluation of that product. H, handle with care. Make sure you're using the charger supplied to you by the manufacturer. A, always stay alert for warning signs. Look for physical damage like punctures or dents. R, recycle the devices responsibly. Don't throw them in your waste stream. G, get out immediately if there's a fire. E, educate others. Using what you've learned here, make sure you share with your friends and family how to take charge of battery safety. Yeah, and finally, I just wanted to share uh, some complementary resources we have in our websites. Uh, if you just scan the barcode here, you get access to all uh, public education uh, material that we have uh, shared already on, on our websites. Uh, the services that we can do related to battery certification, and also we have a, a trainer, uh, training material that's available online for free. Um, for example, I would, I would share the training that we have for the fire service consideration uh, with lithium ion battery energy storage system. This is basically on, uh, it talks about the incident that happened back in 2019 uh, in the US in Arizona related to energy storage systems where uh, at least four firefighters uh, had major um, uh, injuries due to the due to the incidents of um, energy storage systems so these are the kind of webinars available online uh, for free um, it's sharing knowledge and uh, we can educate our teams and that's it uh, thank you very much for listening and please let me know if you have any question